What is it about the country Nigeria that just won't quit? In over a hundred years of nationhood, Nigeria has gone through fleeting joy and growing pain that would have proven too much for lesser countries. But because this country, on the west coast of Africa, lying on latitudes 4 degrees north of the equator and latitudes 3 degrees and 14 degrees on the east of the Greenwich Meridian, is a richly blessed country. She stands, though not as tall as would have been desired in the midst of other African countries. With sustained democracy, successive administrations have deployed familiar policies to tackle familiar problems, but little was achieved. Little wonder the all-progressive Congress administration of President Muhammadu Buhari met a problematic economy in 2015 and has done remarkably well in changing the status quo and preparing the ground for sustained development. Right now, we are on the cusp of another election year and many contenders who claim to wield the magic wand to dispel the myriad of challenges that besiege the country are on the field. However, out of the many that have put their hearts in the ring, there is one who hasn't come spouting sweet nothings and promising magic tricks. His offerings is of the convention and definitely a durable and doable fix to the palpable challenges on the lips of every Nigerian that has come of age. That aspirant is Governor Yahaya Adoza Bello of the North Central Kogi State. The great Winston Churchill once said, All the great things are simple, and many can be expressed in a single word. Freedom, justice, honor, duty, mercy, and hope. And nothing tells the story of hope more than the life of Governor Yahaya Bello, JYB. From a very humble beginning, with hard work and without access to even a wooden spoon, he turned opportunities to possibilities along his path. His toil, intelligence, and eye for the best made him highly successful in no time until he broke age-long barriers to become the governor of Kogi State. From the beginning, he was determined to turn abandoned key sectors around in record time in the state. And of course, he achieved this to the glory of God. Today, Kogi has become a point of reference at home and in international discourse with footprints of unparalleled achievements in key sector. Little wonder, his campaign is tagged Hope 23 and premised on three main pillars, summed up with the acronym SUP, Security, Unity and Progress. I am running to restore hope by providing firm guarantees of security, unity and progress to all Nigerians. Our focus will be proper management of our great diversities so that it can really be an advantage. We will foster more cooperation and integration among citizens and make sure that progress is made steadily across all sectors and indicators. Unlike many other contenders who are either in the race because someone told them they should join the crowd, or because they want to try their luck. Yahya Bello has been long prepared and knows exactly what he wants to do. His well thought out manifesto, the roadmap to hope, captures it in a concise way. In Wikipedia, you will see our strong efforts in education, health, infrastructure, and utility, job creation and youth empowerment civil service and pension reforms, agriculture, security, human capital development, as well as our effort in cooperation and integration. Cogipedia is a rich resource for research into the claim of performance, which we shall make in the course of our presidential run. 
What makes Governor Bello confident he would effectively address these challenges as president, starting with the issue of security? On security, Governor Yaya Bello would have done differently. When we arrived in Togi State, His Excellency from Intelligence knew the security of the locations of terrorist cells, names of kidnapped birds, and dogs and assassins in Togi State. He probably was also listening to their conversation, but he did not speak about it. He went head on and decimated them, and today, Togi is one of the safest states in Nigeria. So, on security, Governor Yayabolo does more of action than talking. I have a roadmap for peace, security, national unity, and harmony. When I become the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, by the special grace of God, from my first day in office, my administration will assemble a team of patriotic Nigerians reflective of our national diversity who possesses the requisite qualifications, experience and exposure to achieve effective results. Under my leadership, insecurity by whatever name it is called will be brought to an end, just like I did in my capacity as Executive Governor of Kogi State. Like the Nigerian state, Kogi is a collection of several ethnicities. The Ibiras, the Igalas and Okun people have all lived together for several years, but not without deep issues of tribal sentiments, until GYB, the unifier, changed the narrative with an all-inclusive system of government. I have a roadmap for youths, women, and persons with disabilities and special needs. I will ensure the inclusive, qualitative education, social protection, empowerment, and employment, the provision of an affordable health insurance scheme for persons with disabilities and special needs. As a youthful president, I will connect our predominantly youthful population to harness their positive energies for national development. My government will also work to create gainful employment and entrepreneurship opportunities. Our leadership will ensure increased participation of women in government. I pledge that the affirmative action threshold of 35% stipulated by the Sustainable Development Goal will be the baseline for women in our government. In Kogi State, evidence abound to the remarkable work that has been accomplished by the Bello administration. Before 2016, the monthly federal allocation and internally generated revenue could barely cater to the overhead cost and recurrent expenditure. The state's debt profile had peaked above 130 billion naira. The decline in infrastructure also stared the people in the face until GYB and his dynamic administration rekindled the hope of the people. Now, the debt profile of the state has been reduced to 70 billion naira, and the various road projects have given the state a facelift. For the records, and for the second time running, Kogi State leads other states of the Federation on the World Bank's Fiscal Transparency and Accountability Report. I have a roadmap for job creation, economic prosperity, public and private sector reforms. My leadership will bridge the infrastructure gap in the nation by consolidating on the achievements of the current administration of President Muhammad Buhari in the roads, rails, waterways, aviation, power and utilities. My government will create the enabling environment for the private sector to thrive, thereby creating jobs and gainful employment for our Timi youths in modern agriculture and manufacturing services, creative arts, entrepreneurship, and information and communication technology. Nigeria, of course, is a bigger kettle of fish. 
with an urgent need not only to improve on its revenue generation, but also sensibly allocate resources to the various sectors of its economy. Governor Yahya Bello is determined to bequeath a legacy which ultimately becomes an asset for the future generation. His 16-point roadmap for Nigeria, captured in a 134-page document, clearly attests to his humane, practical and visionary leadership. Job creation and economic prosperity, public and private sector reforms, education and human capital development, among several others on this long list, are priorities that the GYB presidency candidly offers Nigerians. Of course, there are testimonies to promises of this nature in Kogi State. A tour around the Reference Hospital Okini, Specialist Hospital Ida, College of Health Science and Technology Ida, Prince Abubakar Audu Teaching Hospital Anyingba, and the Kogi State College of Nursing and Midwifery Obangede will give a sense of the magic that can be done from an almost zero state of affairs. I have a roadmap for education, healthcare, human capital development, and citizens' welfare. My government will continue to provide free and compulsory basic education in partnership with state governments. We will also revitalize our healthcare sector by ensuring every citizen has access to exceptional medical services vis-a-vis -vis access to universal health coverage. To say education is top priority is to flog the issue. Nigerian students will rank shoulder to shoulder with the best in the world on the back of the right focus, the will and know-how. Don't go too far to ask how. Today, riding on infrastructural and financial empowerment of the sector, Kogi State is the only state in Nigeria where students of higher institutions enjoy hate-free learning and are not affected by strikes. Being the visionary leader that he is, Governor Bello knows that the major components of the country's vast human capital that will drive this vision are the women and youth. They already occupy positions of pride in his government in Kogi State and can only be more strategically included if he becomes president. He may be one out of many voices jostling for the attention of the Nigerian electorate, but Governor Yahya Adoza Bello is almost singular in being articulate, clearly focused and determined to execute his well-thought-out plans for a nation that will be the pride of the black race if granted access to the office he seeks. There is life yet in Nigeria, and come 2023, one man is bringing hope. His name is Yahya Adoza Bello.